Hi guys, welcome to 5-Minute Book Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about The Silver Chair by C.S. Lewis, and this is the fourth book in the Chronicles of Narnia, and it picks up with Eustace, who we met in The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, and a new character named Jill Pohl, and they in find themselves in Narnia, and they find out that Rillian, who is Prince Caspian's son from the book Prince Caspian, has been captured, and he's been missing for 10 years, so they go on a quest to find him. Along the way, they meet another character named Puddleglum, and these three characters vigil into the underworld of Narnia and there they find the adversary of the book who is a transforming queen who takes the form of a snake. They're able to do battle with her and rescue Rillian who has been imprisoned by her and basically brainwashed by her but once they break the spell they're able to return him to Caspian and he is able to claim the throne after his father's passing. Perhaps the main theme of this book is the idea of truth. Now, at the beginning of the book, Jill is given several signs that Aslan tells her to pay attention to and to not miss the signs. And there will be a lot of things that might seem to be true, but aren't true. And as the story progresses, she initially she pays attention to them. But as the story progresses, she begins to pay less and less attention to the signs. And then at the end of the book, she comes to realize what Aslan was talking about. Because there are a lot of things that happen in the story where things things aren't as they seem. You have the main antagonist who takes on this form of this beautiful queen that puts uh, really on a silver chair and just repeats mantras over and over to them to where he becomes almost blind and deaf and dumb to the world around him. But when he breaks free of all of these different kinds of voices speaking into him and all this imagery that has been given to him, he is able to come to himself and realizes what is real. And the same thing kind of happens with Jill too in a more of a metaphorical sense, but she really realizes what Aslan is talking about through the signs and then she is able to gain some perspective on the world around her because of that. So let's go ahead and score this book. I give this book a three for character development. The only reason I give it that is because I only think we get to see one good character developed in this story. Eustace got great attention in The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, but this one really focuses around Jell and her story. And she gets to have a character arc where she grows in her learning about truth and the nature of truth in this story. But I wish we could have seen some uh, development around Puddleglum and Eustace, who are the other main characters in the story. As far as thematic development goes, I think this one has some great themes to it, in particular around the nature of truth. And we see that played out in the signs given to Jill, as well as some of the imagery, especially around the silver chair and as being a metaphor for uh, being captivated by sights and sounds that kind of draw us away from the truth. And you have to break free of that in order to see truth for what it really is and to see what is really deceiving us from seeing what the reality of the world might be. As the plot, far as plot goes, I think this is a great plot. I think there's a lot here. We get to see a journey take place, and that journey does support the character development and the thematic development of the story. We get to see the character's journey from Narnia up into the north of Narnia, and then go into the underworld there, and then we see a lot of the development that goes with that in how they are able to have a battle against high stakes, which plays right into the conflict, which is, again, a solid four. Um, we see multiple levels of conflict here. We see the internal conflict with the characters kind of becoming more numb to the truth as the story progresses, but they also have high stakes as they progress through the, uh, the various worlds that they have to go through, uh, such as the north of Narnia and dealing with the challenges they face there, then in the underworld of Narnia, whenever they go to face the queen and have to break Rillian out of that environment. The setting is a solid five. Like most of C.S. Lewis's books, we get to see not only Narnia, but we get to see some of the expanded world around Narnia, the north in particular, and the underground of Narnia in this particular story, which again really does support the conflict that we see, as well as a lot of the plot and the character development. We also get to see the beauty of that world and how it unfolds, and a lot of the nuances that we get to see in other books as well. As far as readability goes, this book is wildly enjoyable from a readability perspective. I think, again, C.S. Lewis is a master of the craft. He does a great job of creating stories and making them easy to read for not only adults, but as well as children. So this book appeals to a broad audience, and it is something that you can pick up and read in a couple of hours and really enjoy the book, which also plays into its entertainment value. I think this book is, is entertaining as well. It's not a, a stale story, and there's definitely a lot of suspense and 
conflict, I think, that we get in this story. And so it does have high entertainment value. This book has been adapted um, to some small screen formats. Uh, I think the BBC did a production, and I think there was uh, some other small scale productions. It hasn't seen a feature movie like some of the other books have, but it is a great story. And I think that anybody that likes the fantasy genre, especially children's literature that is in the fantasy, would enjoy this book as well. So this story gets a 31 out of a possible 35. It's not my favorite in the series, but it is a strong book for its thematic content, as well as just being a fun read.